Alicia Pisha, Alicia Pisha, welcome to Alicia Pisha. If you haven't already, I would recommend that you watch part one of me making the actual cakes first before watching this video. It will be linked down in the description box below. Hi guys, it's me Alicia and today I'm going to be showing how I decorated my spring themed cake. Let's go! So first I'm just showing you the buttercream, the three cakes that I have, and now I'm going to be levelling them because even though I did tap them before, before I baked them, they do become a little bit uneven. I also just want to make sure that the three levels of the cake are the same height. Leveling the two lemon cakes was a lot easier than leveling the honey cakes. This is probably because the lemon cakes are a bit more spongy and a bit softer, but the honey cake is, well I wouldn't say dense, it's just more structured. Leveling your cakes also gives you a great opportunity to taste how some of the cake is, especially if you're going to be selling the cake to your client and not eating it yourself. Now I'm just adding a little bit of buttercream to my cake board to make sure that my cakes will be secured. And then I added the first lemon cake onto the board and just made sure it was centre and squashed it down. Now I'm mixing in a bit of honey into some of the buttercream to make a nice little honey chamber for one of the layers. I also added a few shakes of cinnamon and some mixed spice for added flavour. Now I'm just adding a thin layer of buttercream to the lemon cake layer. This is to make sure that the lemon curd won't penetrate into the cake layer. This is like adding butter to bread to make sure that none of the sandwich filling penetrates into the bread and makes it all soggy. And then to make sure that none of the lemon curd spilled out when I added the other layers, I added a little chamber of buttercream around the edge. After adding the buttercream, I made sure to spread it out so it had an even layer for each slice of cake. Even though you can see me scraping in the edges, when I add the other cakes, it will definitely even out to become one flat layer all the way around. And then I just added the honey cake on top and my mom just squished it down a little bit and made sure that it was centered because you do not want an oblong cake. Then I just piped another chamber around for the honey buttercream to go in. The reason I didn't put the honey um, straight into the chamber is because honey is a lot more viscous than lemon curd. And honey is more likely to absorb into the cake below it than honey buttercream. After I smoothed out the honey buttercream, I added the third and final layer of cake.
After making sure all the cakes were centered, it was time to remove the piece of parchment paper from the cake. Whilst the cake was chilling, I grated some white chocolate. Look how perfectly I snacked that, it's almost in half. The reason I'm grating the chocolate is because I want to be able to temper it. If I melt the chocolate and get it to too high of a temperature, it will become the wrong type of crystal and it will not temper to the hard, snappable chocolate that we all love. So, using chocolate seeds means that you can reduce the temperature of the chocolate whilst it's still melted, which will give you a nice snackable chocolate when it's hardened. Then my mum added some yellow powdered food colouring. The reason I'm using a powder is because I don't want to use a liquid food colouring which would have water in it, and water makes chocolate seize. Basically, it makes the chocolate go all hard and crumbly, which is not what we want. The reason I'm melting this chocolate is to create this really cool honeycomb effect that I've been seeing people make with bubble wrap. Don't worry, I washed the bubble wrap the day before to make sure that it was clean and dry so that no water would go on the chocolate and therefore it wouldn't seize. I first tried to tap the chocolate, it didn't really work, so then I just held it in my hands and swished it around until I got the right thickness. I did also tap it at the end to remove any bubbles that there might be. Then I put the chocolate to the side for it to harden and focus on the cake. Now I'm just using some of the leftover buttercream that was in a piping bag to start the crumb coat. And then I added the cake to a turntable to make it easier to actually crumb coat it. This cake is going to be a semi-naked cake so the crumb coat is basically going to be the only coat that it has. I wanted to do a semi-naked cake because one it would be a bit more natural and also it wouldn't be piled on with tons of icing. Because the lemon cake shrunk a bit in the oven, the honey cake is a bit wider than them. This created a really cool stripe pattern, which I really liked. After I smoothed the sides of the cake, I made sure to smooth the top of the cake. Now I'm going to make another part of the decorations. This is candied lemons. I used a mandolin to slice a lemon into medium sized slices, not too thin but not too thick. And then I added one part water to one part sugar and added one teaspoon of lemon juice. I brought this to a boil on medium heat and then I added the lemon slices. I used the fork to flip them over and then I realized they started shrinking so I added another one. When they started to turn a bit caramelized, I put them on parchment paper and left them to cool. Now it's time to make some fondant bumblebees. I added a bit of cornstarch to the surface so that the fondant wouldn't stick. These bumblebees are very cartoon-like and not meant to be very realistic, so bear that in mind. And then I added some yellow 
powder food colouring. It's the same one that I used to colour the chocolate, but I didn't add as much to the bumblebees. Then I mixed it all together to make sure it didn't end up looking marbled, and I rolled it out into a log. When I fully rolled out the log to the thickness that I wanted, I broke off a piece and made it into the shape of a bumblebee. Then I grabbed a black edible pen and this is what I used to make the stripes of the bumblebee. For the stinger, I decided to use these kind of like sugar crystal this blue sugar crystal sprinkle. I know this thing, the stingers probably aren't blue, but I just thought that it was the closest I was gonna get. This is where I tried to make the wings out of these circular sprinkles, but then I ended up not liking them and used something else to make it. Now I'm just drawing on the stripes for the bee. I did about three stripes for each bee. Then I grabbed some blue funfetti and cut it into pieces to make the eyes. Then I added in the white sprinkles for wings. I ended up not liking them, so I made some, some wings from hearts cut out of edible icing sheet instead. After the bees were made, I decided to make a nice sprinkle mix with golds, oranges, yellows, silvers, and white sprinkles. I grabbed these from a bunch of different sprinkles that my mum had and just mixed them together to make the ultimate spring sprinkle mix. I wrapped some florist wire around a pencil and added the bees on top. And then I added some a straw to it to make sure it would stay in the cake. Then I broke the honeycomb into pieces and added it to the cake where I saw fit. I added some of the bees and the lemon. I also added this little fondant butterfly that my mum had and then I put the, one of the bees into the side of the cake and one on the top. Then I used a piece of foil to make kind of honeycomb huts and I piped some yellow buttercream around it. I actually forgot to record myself adding the sprinkles to the cake and this honey kind of hut to the cake but you guys will be able to see the end result. I then added a black fondant semicircle tab to the front to make it look like the entrance. Are you ready to see how the final cake turned out? Three, two, one. I love how this cake turned out. It looks so amazing. I love how the top has got a lot going on. So many decorations from the honeycomb to the lemon to the bees, but then it's really balanced out by that semi-naked cake and the sprinkles at the bottom, love it. I just love everything about this cake and I'm so happy how it turned out. It's so amazing, I can't believe um, my idea turned into like a real cake. If you're wondering what happened with the cake, I actually bought it to school and gave it to my classmates. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making this cake. Please like and subscribe and share it with all your friends. Bye!